Australia is a sun-drenched country. But go into your typical office building, which is where most of us spend our days, it might as well be night time. The sun just doesn't penetrate. So we're dependent on electricity to light up our workplace. In fact, your average office fluoro blazes for over 12 hours a day, which means one-fifth of an office block's power is sucked away just by electric lights. That's a lot of energy and a lot of fossil fuels. But there may be light on the horizon. Two Australian groups have discovered unique ways of piping sunlight into dark spaces, saving energy and making life a little bit brighter. One of these inventors is architecture PhD student Veronica Garcia Hansen. I come from Argentina. It's a, a country where electricity is really expensive. So the design over there is always trying to save energy. Veronica's plan is to revolutionise lighting in multi-storey buildings with huge mirrored pipes. Light pipes like this one have actually been around for years and they're a pretty simple concept. Light comes in through the roof and out the bottom into your room. But Veronica's challenge is far greater. To deliver light deep into buildings, down through many floors. What we're working on is something that brings natural light 20 metres in distance. Lengthening a standard light pipe seems an obvious solution, but this initial prototype reveals a problem. A longer pipe means more reflections. What happens is every time the light bounces, it, it, it loses intensity. Enter physicist Ian Edmonds, inventor of a simple looking panel of plastic with remarkable properties. This panel contains thousands of small mirrors that have been produced by laser cups, and uh, these mirrors redirect the light in the manner we want. When we add Ian's laser cut panel, the beams of light straighten up and travel the entire length of the pipe. We're getting, at the end of the pipe, we're getting ten times more light than we did before. Success? Well, not quite yet. There's still the problem of getting the light out of the pipe and evenly into the rooms. Mirrors intercept some of the light so that each part of the office gets an equal amount of sunshine. The system of pipes can also be turned vertically. Light comes in at the top of the building and light meter measurements on the model show that plenty of light can reach up to five floors below. Veronica believes her design could reduce an office building's energy consumption by half. Natural light reveals the architecture. You, know, you, you can see it, the spaces are nicer, but also you save energy and uh, you're creating a lot more healthy environments for people. But what about light piping technology you can use in your home? Further south in Sydney, Jim Franklin and his team are about to test a revolutionary idea, trapping sunshine with coloured fluorescent plastic. Jim, why can't we just use clear plastic to capture sunlight? Because if you had the sunlight hit a piece of clear plastic, it would pass right through. You wouldn't get any of it trapped inside the sheet. What we have to use is special fluorescent dyes that capture the sunlight one colour at a time. If we have the light hit the, the sheet, it's absorbed. Trapped inside the sheet, it moves down towards the end. If that was in sunlight, it would be so bright you wouldn't be able to look at it. The concept of using different coloured layers is based on a fundamental principle of light itself. White light is actually a mixture of three primary colours, red, green and blue. Well, we have collector sheets with fluorescent dyes for red and for green, so you can have them together as a stack. And they sit inside this device here? They do indeed. This is but what about the blue panel? There are no blue dyes available. We'd have to use a violet dye. And they're inefficient and they don't last very long. So we use some little solar-powered LEDs, which sort of come out the end of the system. Mm -hmm. And then when, when we add the light from the collector sheets, the red and the green, and mix them together with a little diffuser, we get white. It is very white. Yeah, it's excellent. So this is the final device that sits on the outside of your house and collects the sunlight? That's right, on a wall or a roof, as long as it can face the sun. You have the sheets here that capture the red and the green light, the solar cell that powers the little blue LED, and the light guides here transport the light to wherever you want it.
and these can then go down through the walls, under the floors, into the heart of the building so you can get sunlight to where you want it. Okay, you ready? Yep. That looks great. Yeah. It may be hard to believe, but this light is supplying the equivalent of two 75 watt bulbs, all courtesy of the sun. I think in the future every house will probably have two or three even more of these fluorosolar collectors because it's the only way to get sunlight deep into the heart of the building. It saves a lot of energy and with global warming that's very, very important. So if these scientists have their way, soon we'll be switching the light off and letting the sun shine in.